What is going on guys, Danny AR10 here uh, with another review. Uh, this is of the Samsung Galaxy S3 on AT&T. Uh, most of you guys know I did a video last week, kind of give you an update on Jelly Bean and the Galaxy Nexus review that I was going to have coming. But unfortunately, uh, well fortunately in my behalf, uh, the market kind of blew up last week for the Galaxy Nexus on Craigslist. Uh, mostly in part due to Jelly Bean being released and being compatible only with the Galaxy Nexus. And the fact that Google halted sales of the Galaxy Nexus in the United States because of the uh, patent infringements that they had with Apple and the disputes. So it kind of blew up and I was able to actually sell a phone for uh, about $50 more than I actually purchased it for recently. Uh, so I went ahead and did that because I knew it wasn't going to be a phone that I held on to uh, going forward just because of the lack of uh, you know, a camera that was sufficient enough for me to use it as my daily camera, which is what I use my cell phone for. So I went ahead and sold it and I picked up the Galaxy S3 from AT&T on release day. I've had a few days to play around with it, use it, test it out, and kind of compare it to the HTC One X that I you know, had, and as well as the Galaxy Nexus. Uh, here it is. This is the Pebble Blue version. I uh, went ahead and put a screen protector on there already that came with the uh, OtterBox Defender case that I had purchased and returned because I wasn't really uh, enjoying it. felt that it was too bulky. And the buttons were real hard to press. Uh, so there's the uh, metallic blue or pebble blue, as you want to call it. it. Does have a brush metal kind of look to it, if you can see there the lines. <clears throat> AT&T branding right there. Uh, of course, let's get into the details itself. You guys know everything that there is to know to it. Uh, it's been out for a few months already internationally. A little different than the domestic U.S. versions. Uh, the AT&T version is a uh, 4.8 inch display, of course, Super AMOLED, uh, HD, 1.4 gigahertz, I believe, uh, dual core S4 Snapdragon processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, uh, 2100 milliamp hour replaceable battery that is, you know, you could remove it by removing that back plate, uh, 8 megapixel rear camera, and you got a 720p, I believe, 1.3. A 1.4 megapixel front facing camera. <clears throat> front, there you go. You got your home button down there. Menu and back buttons here. Not really feeling those too much. I was kind of used to the uh, HTC One X and the uh, Galaxy Nexus buttons, which I prefer the Galaxy Nexus buttons, which were on the screen itself, not necessarily capacitive buttons. But that's just nitpicking. Uh, going into a little more detail on the phone is far as performance. Haven't really noticed it to be much faster than the HTC One X in daily use. Uh, as far as uh, raw processing power, uh, you know, it does have an extra gig of RAM compared to the HTC One X, but in your everyday use you really won't notice much of a difference. Uh, the phone does have a bit of a plasticky feel to it in comparisons also to the One X. And you'll feel you'll hear a lot of comparisons to the One X in these in this video just because it is the uh, you know other phone that's as comparable <clears throat> and some may say better than the Galaxy S3 so if you'll hear a lot of comparisons uh, but it is a uh, polycarbonate uh, finish on the 1X this is a plastic finish on the Samsung so it does feel a little plasticky but you know some people may enjoy that uh, I on the other hand don't really have a preference uh, this does make the phone feel a little lighter uh, if not a little cheaper but you do get the trade-off of having the replaceable battery, which you do not have on the One X, for those who like to carry uh, multiple batteries around. As far as display, the One X has a 4.7. This has a 4.8 inch, like I stated earlier. Uh, I really won't go into much as far as S-Voice, because it's not really a feature that, uh, at this moment, it's very usable. Uh, it is working, and it is you know, supposed to be a competitor to Siri, but I don't, I don't really see it, uh, you know, taking over, or it, I see it soon being replaced by uh, Google Voice, uh, which will come out on the uh, Jelly Bean update. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into, you know, what you get in the box itself. Uh, <clears throat> I like the fact that AT&T did not change the packaging. Usually they like to change up their packaging from uh, the manufacturer boxes to their own AT&T branded boxes, which they didn't do so with the Galaxy S3. They didn't want to cheapen it. Uh, <clears throat> inside... The receipt. I always keep all my receipts and even the screen protectors for resale. <laughs> you get your smart start guide or quick start guide, whatever you want to call it. Inside, you get your 
basic USB cable. You get your wall charger, which is actually have a, quite a few of these. Uh, these Samsung branded uh, USB wall chargers. They go for about three, four bucks on Amazon. I've ordered quite a few just to have around the house. And surprisingly, you get actually a pair of headphones. Um, usually, AT and T phones or whatever the case may be, they don't give you any headphones. I know this is a Galaxy S3 and it's different, but the One X, I believe the international version, you would get a pair of headphones. You don't get that with the uh, Galaxy S3. Well, you didn't get that with the US version. Excuse me, I'm confusing myself. So it's good that they kept everything intact. They give you everything that originally came with it. Uh, that's really all you get in the box itself. Let's go into more detail on the actual phone and get this out of the way. As far as camera quality, uh, there's a few uh, pet peeves that I have as far as the comparisons to the One X. Uh, the one feature that most people loved about the One X and you know really were excited about about the uh, Galaxy S3 was the shutter speed or the shutter button uh, on the camera, which basically lets you take a rapid succession of shots and let you save the best one. Uh, on the One X, it's accomplished by just holding down this camera button down here, and you can, I believe you can take up to, I think it's 50 shots, and then choose the best one. On the Galaxy S3, it's a little different, and you can't actually hold the button down and take a rapid succession of shots. You actually have to go into the menu here on the side, click this button, and you actually have to switch to burst shot mode. And then once you press it, then that's how you have to do it. You can either hold it for the full, you know, 20, or, you know, take one. So, I mean, it doesn't really make a big difference, but I don't like the fact that you have to switch back and forth between uh, shutter mode. I wish you could just hold the button down um, and just do it like that, like they do on the One X. Small pet peeve, but some people may not enjoy that. <clears throat> Uh, camera quality itself, I really found not a big difference between the two. Uh, I found myself seeing the quality on the Galaxy S3 a little better in low light. <clears throat> the One X performed just as good in daytime shots, uh, and it actually seemed to focus a little faster than the Galaxy S3. Uh, the Galaxy S3 was a little slower to focus, not by any means slow at all, but it was a little uh, slower in general as far as focusing. Uh, anything else I want to go into is the uh, 4G LTE. Uh, I am in Miami, so the 4G LTE coverage has just rolled out. I uh, actually just found out from the guy at the AT&T store that it had just rolled out over the past few weeks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a test on how that works in Miami if you're in the Miami area. I am very excited to have it because when I had the Lumia 900 a few months back, uh, LTE had not rolled out yet in, uh, in Miami, which it is here, and you can see there on the top. See if you can get close enough to see focus. Uh, I do have four bars of LTE, or just about four bars of 4G LTE, and I'll do a speed test for you guys so you can get an idea of the type of speeds I'm getting. Uh, any I've ranged in between 17 megs uh, down to about eight megs. So let's give it a test here and see uh, what I'm getting. Yeah, you can see there on four bars, not even five bars. Uh, I got approximately 24 megs of uh, download and a little bit over 7 on upload, which is uh, about five times faster than my home internet service. So I've been using this most of the time on 4G LTE and not necessarily on my home internet, which is pretty sad. Uh, DSL is the only thing available in my area, and I'm limited to about 6 megs. But you can see there are 23 megs, almost 24 megs, 23.9, and 7 megs up, which is crazy fast. Uh, I've seen on average more. I'm more around the 15 to 18 mark. 23 has been the high uh, that I've ever seen uh, on a speed test uh, on the 4G network, on the LTE network. But I mean, as far as everything else, guys, there really isn't much else to it. Uh, it does come with your fair share of Samsung apps that come preloaded. Uh, the S Suggest, S Memo, uh, you know, just some of the few S applications that Samsung loves to put on there. Uh, I wasn't really thrilled with S Voice, so if you're trying to buy it thinking that S Voice is going to be the competitor to Siri, don't do it uh, because it is really dependent on your internet connection or your network connection to get a quick response back. Uh, it seems to be very delayed and very laggy. So I'm looking forward more to the uh, Jelly Bean release 
And if you're looking forward to the Dolly being released, as far as the One X or the Samsung Galaxy S3, uh, they've just released the developer kit or the API tools for for Dolly Bean in general. And both the Galaxy S3 and the HTC One X have had uh, working ports of Jelly Bean for the past week or so, but very limited in features. Some of the features aren't working as far as the the radio, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and camera. So those are you know killer points that you don't want to be losing on your phone. So go ahead and wait for the full-fledged release, which should be coming soon, uh, as, as well as Synergen Mod and that type of stuff if you enjoy the uh, the rooting and the modding. So that was my quick review, guys, of the uh, Samsung Galaxy S3. Uh, be sure to check out my next video, which will be the One X video that I've kind of delayed for a while. Uh, my HTC One X actually died on me a few days after getting it, something with the battery. Uh, so I actually had to send it back to uh, HTC because it was a replacement phone already from one that I received on an insurance claim. So I had to send it back to HTC. It should be back within the next few days. And I'll do a review and a comparison battle between the two so you guys can make your decision. Once again, this is Danny AR10 signing out.